Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, my name is Amy and this is part two of a multi-part introduction to STATA workshop um, that was developed by myself and my collaborator Rebecca Glitt. Hopefully you were able to watch part one which went over how data are organized and stored in STATA and this is part two which will cover data manipulation or what you're doing when you're working with data in STATA. Data manipulation is the core component of what you're doing when you're using Stata or other statistical softwares to answer your research questions. We think of data manipulation as consisting of two building blocks. On the one hand, we have functions, and on the other hand, we have subsetting. Functions are essentially what we want to do, and subsetting is which observations we want to use the function on. So when combined, functions and subsetting let us manipulate the data to answer research questions that we may have. So let's start by talking about subsetting. The way we think about subsetting is through using logical if statements. And the best way to talk about logical if statements is through a Venn diagram. So hopefully everyone is at least somewhat familiar with Venn diagrams and what they show. Here we have a large oval that represents all observations in our data. If you remember from part one, this is a data set that has survey answers from some friends of um, me and Rebecca, and a portion of these friends are grad students. Right? So we know that among all of our observations, a subset or a portion of these observations represent grad students. So here we've denoted grad students by a circle that's part of all observations. We would refer to this sample by using a logical if statement. If we wanted to focus on grad students, we would say look at people if they are a grad student, right? This is common vernacular that we use every day, um, but what this is called is a logical if. If you remember from part one as well, Stata holds information about each observation uh, using variables. And the way that we think about who is a grad student is we'd refer to the variable year underscore school, which tells us what year someone is in school. And specifically, we would focus on the value of six, right? So if year in school is equal to six, this tells us whether someone is a grad student. So already we've moved from regular English, talking about if someone is a grad student, to thinking in terms of variables, right? So we're one step closer to actually letting Stata know that we wanna look at only grad students. But Stata, like other statistical software programs, has very specific syntax or a very specific language that you need to use uh, in order to do things with Stata. So if we were to convert this verbal phrase into Stata syntax, we would write if year underscore school equals equals six. And throughout this presentation, anything that's in this type of font will denote Stata syntax. There's a couple things to note here. First, we have the if, which is the logical if. Then we have the key variable that we're paying attention to that tells us information about the observations in our sample. Over here, we have the value six, right? Year in school being equal to six tells us that we're looking at grad students. And finally, we have these two equal signs here. And the two equal signs are very important uh, because this is what tells Stata that we are using logical syntax, right? We're using a logical if statement. These two equal signs in English basically translate to is equal to. All right, so we've talked you through what this looks like in Venn diagrams, but let's see what this actually looks like in Stata and what the data, what happens with the data. Right, so first let's browse all of our data. This is what we did in part one where we just looked at the data in Stata. Here you can see we have 13 observations, and if we look at the year in school variable, there's a huge range of different years in school. Now we can add the Stata syntax that we learned, um, and we can browse if year underscore school equals equals six. And what you can see is that instead of the 13 total observations, now we're only looking at eight, and we're only looking at the eight people who are grad students. And if you remember from part one, even though it says grad student in blue, um, the underlying information that Stata is holding on to is the number six. So here we're selecting if year underscore school equals equals six, and we're browsing only grad students. So let's make things a little bit more complicated because often we're not filtering based on only one variable, but rather based on combinations of variables. 
So here we have our larger circle of all observations and then the smaller circle within that of grad students. And then we've added another group of people or another subset. Um, and these are students who have one sibling. And you can note that these two circles overlap because there are some people who are both grad students and have one sibling. There are some people who are only grad students and don't have one sibling. And there are some students who have one sibling, but they're not grad students, right? So we have different categories, different ways that these two uh, groups overlap. So thinking about this green shaded area, how would we talk about this just in English? We would describe this group um, by looking at people if they're a grad student or they have one sibling. Right? So if they fulfill either one of the categories of being a grad student or having one sibling, uh, they would fall in this green area here. And if you remember, the first step in going from English to status syntax is thinking about what variables tell us what information about the data. So we already know that year underscore school gives us information about whether someone's a grad student. So specifically, if year in school is equal to six, but we also have another variable that tells us how many siblings a person has. And this is the variable siblings. Um, and since we're looking at students with one sibling, we wanna know whether this variable is equal to one. So let's convert this to SATA syntax. The first part should look really familiar. It's, we start with our logical if, so we say if year underscore school is equal to six, again, using the double equal sign to denote logic. And then we have this vertical line, which can be found on the far right of your keyboard. And this is the status syntax for the word or. So this means if year in school is equal to six or siblings is equal to one. You can note that after the or, we don't need to repeat the if, um, but we do need to specify the variable. And this variable uh, here is siblings. So let's turn to a final variation of the Venn diagram. Here we have the same two categories, grad students and students with one sibling, but now we've highlighted only the area of overlap between them. In words, we would say we wanna look at people if they're a grad student and they have one sibling. So in contrast to the last example we did, here we only care about the people who fit both criteria of being a grad student and having one sibling. We're gonna use the same variables that we used before. So year underscore school tells us whether someone's a grad student and siblings tells us how many siblings someone has. But now instead of or, we're going to focus on and. And in data syntax, that's just an ampersand, right? So it looks pretty similar to what we just did, um, but now to indicate and, we use an ampersand. So to summarize, when we're using logical statements to subset our data, um, we use the operators or and and. Or is denoted in stata syntax by this vertical line, which again is on the far right of your keyboard. And or means that observations, in order to be included in the subset, must meet at least one criteria. So for example, someone can either be a grad student or have one sibling. And on the other hand, which is denoted with an ampersand, for observations to be included in a subset using and, they must meet all criteria for inclusion, right? So someone must be a grad student and have only one sibling. The way I like to think about this is when we're using or, that encapsulates all areas, and we're using and, that only encapsulates overlapping areas. So now that we've gone over subsetting the data, um, this is a great moment to pause this video, take a moment to practice subsetting yourself by completing numbers one through 13 on the handout that's linked in the video description below. So let's move on to the second building block of data manipulation, which is functions. I'm gonna introduce functions through what's called a function diagram. Um, and I'm gonna talk you through the different pieces of this diagram, uh, which also gives an overview of what functions are and how to think about them. So if we start with the function name in the middle, the first thing that every function needs is an input um, or information that we're gonna include in the input code um, in order to run the function. And then the function will do something behind the scenes and it will present us with output. Um, or specific information that we've asked the function to give us. 
So you'll see these diagrams throughout this presentation, um, but the basic structure of a function is that we have some sort of input, the function does something, and then we get our desired output. So let's talk about an example of when we might use functions in data manipulation. So let's say we want to create a new variable that tells us whether or not someone is an only child. Take a moment and think to yourself about how we might do this. What we're going to do is we're going to use an existing variable called siblings, uh, which we've already looked at before when we were talking about subsetting. And we're going to use this variable to create a new variable, which we'll call only child, where a value of one indicates that someone is an only child and a value of zero indicates that someone is not an only child. This idea of a one, zero, yes, no variable, um, this is called a dummy variable and you'll see these really frequently in uh, social science and other statistical research. In order to create new variables, we use two functions, generate and replace. And throughout this PowerPoint, I'm going to color code functions in blue, um, because when you work with Stata, Stata will color code functions in blue as well. So first I'm going to walk through the overall process of variable creation, and then we're going to break it down and go step by step. So here we have the data um, that we've seen before. This is the friends data set. The first thing we're going to do is create a new variable called only child with some initial value um, that we can set to be whatever we want. So I'm going to start by just creating uh, a variable called only child that has a zero for every observation. Then I'm going to use my logical if statements and the replace function to indicate whether someone is an only child and to change their value of the variable only child to be a one. So here we can see that person number seven, they have no siblings and they're given a one, which indicates that they're an only child. So let's break down what each of these functions is doing. And we'll start with a generate function. So as you remember, each function has an input and an output. For the generate function, the first part of input that you need is a new variable name. And this can be anything you want. Um, and like I said earlier, we're going to call this variable only child. The second piece of input that you need is a value for this new variable. And again, this value can be anything that you want. Like I showed you before, I'm just going to set the initial value equal to zero, um, but you could set it to anything you want. One thing to note about the syntax of this command, and again, syntax for data is denoted in this font, is that unlike when we're using logical if statements and subsetting, here we only use one equal sign. And this is because this equal sign does not denote a logical statement. It's just setting a value for this new variable. So what's the output of the generate function going to be? It's going to give us a new variable with the specified name and the specified values. As we saw before, running this command generate only child equals zero gives us a new variable called only child. And every single observation has the value of zero because that's what I specified up top here. So let's talk about the replace function. The replace function has three pieces uh, that are required for the input. The first is we need to write down which variable we want to change or edit. Um, and here we're changing the only child variable. Um, and here we have to be very specific about the name of the variable that we want to edit. The second piece of input is a new value for the variable. And like I said earlier, this only child variable is going to take on two values, either zero or one. We already did the zero when we used generate to create the variable. Um, and now we're going to use replace to um, assign the ones to the relevant observations. And then the final piece of input is an if statement specifying the subset that we want to replace this variable for. So this one for only child indicates that someone is an only child or that they have zero siblings. So we're going to use an if statement that tells us which observations in the data set have zero siblings, right? So we say if siblings is equal to zero. 
And here's where the difference between the single equal sign and the double equal sign is really important. We use the single equal sign here because we're setting a new value for the variable only child. And we use the double equal sign here because we're using a logical if statement to select a subset of the data of only children. So what's the output of the replace function? What this function will do is it will take the specified subset that we specified using the logical if statement of the variable that we're replacing, and it will assign a new value for that variable for the subset that we specified. So let's see this in action. Here you can now see that we've replaced the zero with a one for a person number seven who's an only child. One thing to call attention to, as I talked about in part one, is the role of missing data in data manipulation. Right, so this person, person number 10, they are missing information on the variable siblings. So we don't actually know how many siblings they have. Because of the way I created the variable using generate only child equals zero, this person has a zero on the variable only child. So we're assuming that they're not an only child. But this is probably not the best way to go about things. So we need to think about how to deal with missing data when we're creating new variables. So here what I've done is I know that Stata's syntax for missing data is a dot or a period, and I've replaced the only child variable with a dot for any observation that's missing on the siblings variable. So now you can see that for person number 10, they're missing on the siblings variable, and they're also missing on the only child variable. This way we're not making any assumptions when we create new variables and we're keeping track of what information is present in our data and what information is missing. You can note in the syntax above that we can use a period or dot to indicate missingness and we just type that in the syntax as if it were another number or another value of the variable. So now that we've talked through a little bit of data manipulation using the functions generate and replace, um, this is a great time to practice this on your own by doing what we call coding by hand, um, or kind of pretending that you are the computer and creating new variables uh, following the syntax that we give you. So take a moment and click on the worksheet that's linked in the description below and do numbers 14 through 18 to practice using generate and replace to create new variables. Once you finish those activities, we hope to see you back for part three, which is a self-directed portion in which you'll be able to get your hands dirty and use Stata yourself.